Cheers everybody, hope you're having a good weekend. Try to make this a quick video, it's going to be concise, so listen up. Today, I want to talk about how to maintenance socially with police officers, um, how to maintenance your knives, and what you're able to do in California versus let's say just for instance Utah okay in Utah in Utah you can carry dirks daggers butterfly knives stilettos um, I think you can even carry a bayonet and switchblade concealed I might be wrong on the bayonet. I'm just taking somebody's word for it that supposedly looked it up, so I could be wrong, and if I am, leave a comment. But in California, the knives I just mentioned, totally illegal. For instance, a bayonet is double-edged, a, a dagger is double-edged, a dark is double-edged, a stiletto, um, I actually, I don't even know what a stiletto is. Butterfly knife, I do know what that is, and that's illegal. Um, let's see. Any other knives I may have mentioned, I forgot. Um, yeah, anyway. So those knives are illegal in California. Um, I do own a dirk, but, like, I, I can't even use this little-ass dirk you know, to protect myself from somebody that's coming at me with, uh, let's say, this, okay? Now, what I'm doing this video for is because today I maintenanced all my knives. I really don't have to unbutton this and show you. I'll just go ahead and tell you. The freaking knife has a very good factory sharpen. It doesn't always happen with knives. So this one I just oiled. I didn't have to do anything but oil it, okay? Which is a plus for me because it's a little less aggravating to have to sharpen every freaking knife. So it had a good factory sharpen. But that knife I just showed you, it has a um, Linux coating on it, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. Don't feel bad if you got a knife with a Linux coating and it's not cold steel. It's not a big deal. You know, cold steel is meant for climates where there's permafrost in the wood and people are having to chop wood and shit in cold climates. Um, but cold steel is also necessary for chopping wood. So both my axes, this one, this axe here, cold steel. It's only about an inch and uh, maybe it's more than an inch, I think, but thick at the base. And uh, that's all you need in a, clim in a climate like California, anyway. Hold on a second. And the reason why that is, is because it doesn't get, I mean, I guess it gets cold up near Mount Shasta and stuff, but, um, you know, there's plenty of places around here where you can re-up on knives. Where in Alaska you buy a knife you want it to last forever because you don't want to keep trying to get to town which could be miles and miles away. All right, so Linex is nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, if you have a Linex coated knife which is probably stainless steel it's perfectly fine. All right, so um, this video is about how today I maintenanced all my knives. If you look close, you can see the, a little bit of oil left on there after I sharpened it. And I didn't have to Google anything for sharpening because you don't have to be a rocket scientist when you have a sharpener. You just look at it, use a little deductive logic and you can see, look closely at it. Look closely at it. This one here, is the main sharpener. This is the mid-range and this is the finisher right here. See that white shit in there? That's the finisher. I didn't have to Google that shit up. I fucking am not dumb. 
okay? I figured that out. And besides, when I was done using that protocol, each knife was sharp as fuck. There's the proof right there. I, I, I shouldn't have tried to test it with my finger. That was... <laughs> I just wanted, I just wanted to see, is it, you know, is it, is it fucking that sharp? And yes, it was. It fucking cut my finger. Okay, so um, I guess I could have used a paper and tried to cut it like on First Blood, Rambo. But the truth is, that's movie magic. You can't have a giant fucking knife like that. That I don't care how sharp it is. It's not going to cut a piece of paper like a razor blade. And by the way. You might even have difficulty with a razor blade cutting a piece of paper, a piece of copy paper like that. It, it's just, it, I guess you could with a razor because its diameter, a diameter is so thin. But the truth of the matter is that's moving magic. You can't do that with even a very fucking sharp big knife. Can't, uh, carambit knives. Carambit knives are my favorite for, let's say, bear, a bear attack. Um, because they have holes to hold in your fingers. So basically, they're fit, affixed to your hands. The bear's going to think they're claws. And if it's attacking you and grabbing you by the face or something, and you're just, you know, going hog wild all over it, that bear is going to retreat, bro. Because that shit's going to open the bear up, right? That shit. And, and if it isn't opening it up properly, because the bear's got thick skin, and uh, it's got a lot of fur, so there's no guarantee it's going to open it up. So if that's the case, just make sure you jab in to the bear or the mountain lion. So that the fuck, and these will too. These are double-edged, these are legal double-edged California knives. Okay? And they got plastic sheaths, and I'll be honest with you, you have to have plastic sheaths. For carambit knives because you can easily fuck yourself up if you're trying to do shit really quick with them. Always have one of these. This has everything on it. Bottle opener, can opener, um, wrenches. Um, I guess you could read that. You know, and direct. I carry a compass wherever I fucking go, so... And, uh, you know, camera, it just has everything. It has a, even a little knife on it. This, uh, you know, this dirk here. Like I just told you. Did I just tell you this? I, did this vi I had to do this video over because I had some bloopers. But, yeah, this, this thing can get you in trouble. Always make sure, though, it's, it, it, it's not illegal to purchase a dirk. It's illegal to use a dirk. Okay? It's illegal to conceal a dirk. So if you're traveling, make sure your dirk is sitting out on the seat, like put it in one of those rectangular microwave dishes, and just have it exposed. So if a cop stops you, just tell him it's in the back seat. You'll be able to see it with your flashlight. And if he, keep, and if he sees, says keep your arms in the air, do exactly what the cop says. I'm not against cops. Sometimes they are, you know, seeking out adrenaline, and some of them can be aggressive and you just have to learn how to feel each different cop out um, with the coffee bean I really don't want to get into it because there's five four sheriffs in there and the manager couldn't even barely sick him on me because he he tried to kick me out in two minutes just because I have this fucking knife here and the, and the sheriffs knew they didn't want to fucking talk to me they knew my knife is legal it's in a sheath it's not being hidden and uh, you know of course he wanted them to talk to me and try to get them to frisk me. Uh, maybe he thought I was, uh, you know, uh, had warrants or whatever. But my guess is this, that he was taking marching orders, Patrick Downey from Coffee Bean in Ventura off Main Street from Maxine Waters. He saw the big knife. He says, oh, that guy has to be a Trump supporter. <laughs> Too bad, you fucking dumb fuck. You know, I know the law, motherfucker. Anyway, those those sheriffs, those four sheriffs, they had to talk with me outside. One of them kind of said, hey, man, you're getting kind of loud. I said, hey, I'm getting loud, dude, because you're asking me all these questions. I've, I'm not under suspicion of a crime, haven't committed a crime, not on parole. I haven't, I'm not a criminal. You know, what? <laughs> you can't even ask me for my ID, so, you know, kick rocks. I didn't say that, but he... He got the idea, and he left because he knew the guy was wrong. Anyway, sick uh, 
three more cops on me and they were Ventura cops, not sheriffs, they were Ventura cops. They came, they didn't have a clue what was going on, who knows what he told them. He probably made some bullshit up because they seemed kind of aggressive. The first one cop that came out started putting plastic gloves on. I said, dude, you don't have to put your fucking plastic gloves on. Okay, <laughs> that's fucking ridiculous, I told him. And uh, long story short, I am a taxpayer. I have the right to ask them for their name and their badge number. They have to provide it. Do I have to provide mine? No, I don't. I'm not under suspicion of a crime, didn't commit a crime. I'm not a parolee. And uh, they have no right to uh, request my ID. Uh, but they do have the right to 86 me off the property, and I did comply and I left the property. Now, long story short, those cops didn't know what the fuck they were dealing with. Somebody knows the law. And, by the way, <laughs> they were like three or four inches smaller than me. All fucking, all three of them I could have taken if they didn't have tasers or guns. And they were just like fucking citizens. I would have had no problem bitch slapping them all to the ground. All right, so, but I wouldn't have done that because, you know, really they weren't that aggressive. They really weren't that, they conducted themselves pretty good and stuff. So, I mean, even though they were a little stupid for putting the plastic gloves on, like, what, what are you going to do, try to frisk me? You have no right. But anyway, I'll, I'll just leave that at that, okay? But if they would have gotten aggressive with me, and they didn't have tasers, and they didn't have guns, and they were just people on the street, I would have fucking took all three of them out. Guaranteed. So this uh, video is just about how to maintenance, you know, maintenance your knives. Now, also about wild animals. Now, I'll be honest with you, if I had to deal with a bear, and I had this out, you know, obviously I'd probably try to use it, and it might even work. It's very big. And it would probably, but, but the bear doesn't know that. It doesn't recognize it as a blade. And it would just think it's my arm and just swat it out of my hand. Okay? I'm just telling you right up. Yes, you probably receive a very bad gash because I just sharpened and oiled all these knives. But the truth of the matter is, would I think this would be my best option to protect myself from the bear? Well, maybe initially... You know, just to kind of give it a fucking, you know, at least one big gash on its swatting arm or something. But in, in reality, the bear's probably going to get me on the ground, whether I like it or not. So, uh, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a fucking... Uh, these are preferable. These are my carambit knives. And they're preferable. They're preferable because they're not going to come out of my hand. I don't even think a bear, unless it bit me right on the fucking hand. I mean, the chances are I'm going to be able to fucking, you know, fucking fuck the bear up very quickly in short order. And if it, it doesn't go through its fur or its thick skin, because bears do have thick skin, I can also fucking poke them in. And these are legal double-edged knives. They are legal in California. And they're carambit knives. They are totally legal. And because they are going to be hard to come out of my hand, I would prefer them if I was being mauled by a bear. Because I could fuck, fuck that bear up like nobody's business in short order. And they're not even that big. But they would probably do... Well, if I didn't get super lucky cutting the bear's arm off or something with this, which probably would not happen... I could guarantee these little caramid knives would do the trick. Also, this dirk, it's totally illegal, man. It's, a, it's something you hold in your fingers like this, and it's totally illegal. But as long as you have it exposed and while you're traveling to another location, you know, have it exposed in your back seat so if a cop does, you, you know, you can tell, hey, I got a dirk, but it's exposed, it's not being hidden, it's not being concealed, and, uh, you know, it's not being used. He's not going to fuck with you. Here's another thing. These things here, technically these are, uh, well, I don't know about technically even, but uh, there may be a loophole with these. These might be totally legal. 
but because I'm a collector and I am a blackjack professional, I picked them, but they were sharp on all sides. And if a bear was coming charging me and I threw this directly at the bear, I guarantee one of these corners would infiltrate. And if the first one infiltrated, the other three would definitely infiltrate because if it was still attacking and that bear would decide I'm not a good target. So I'm not a big fan of the, um, what is it called? Fucking pep, um, bear spray shit. You know, I, I used to laugh at the strippers telling me about how they used to use that shit on, um, you know, people that spent a thousand dollars on them, didn't get any sex and then wait for them in the parking lot. I used to have to escort them to their cars and I was a bar back, but they, you know, they pay me tips to escort them to their car and be like, why? You got your fucking pepper spray. What are you worried about? <laughs> I wouldn't want to use that on a bear. You know what? A bear can still attack you if it's fucking blind. And it might even aggravate it more. Really. To be quite honest with you. Alright, so I'm just this I'm just showing you that I if you don't like if you have a kid, the first thing you want to do is train the kid from day one to be a good kid. To uh, you know, you wanna make sure that you share the obligations of your wife you know, change their diapers just like your wife changed their diapers. Teach them good from bad right off the bat. If you don't, they're going to freaking get into trouble early on in life. And that's called bad maintenance. And all my knife I just want to show you, this knife also has oil and has been sharpened fully. And um, I don't know, did I show you my cut? Yes, I think I did. Cut my finger on one of my knives because you know, it's so fucking sharp. Like I said, though, my weapon of choice is, is uh, something other than knives. But I'm just showing you, you have to, whatever you have that's a weapon, you always have to maintenance them. I've showed you these throwing knives. Um, these, in particular, I have to sharpen tomorrow along with my black hatchet. But, uh, you know, because of the uh, one long end and partial other end these are legal they're not over four inches they're awesome throwing knives because of that because they get that partial double edge but as long as it's not equal and it's not over four inches it's legal and uh this is just a light good throwing uh good throwing hatchet um, i like light throwing hatchets because because they're light and two-dimensional the, you can throw them like twice the speed of a normal hatchet, you know, like uh, not this hatchet. I would never use this as a throwing hatchet, but um, if I did have to throw a knife or a hatchet rather like this, it would be a lot slower to get to the whatever I was throwing it at. And it would not, you know, it would do a lot of damage if it hit blade first, but it would be hard to, uh, it's... <laughs> It's not profitable. You want something light. You want something cheap uh, and light. And uh, the, of course, when you get uh, hatchets like this, they give them those Linux coatings, which is awesome. It's protection. It's like the bridges, you know, that they uh, they used to cover them with tar to protect them from rust. It's like if you watch American Pickers, they go into those buildings. Everything's rusty because no one maintenance anything. Well, guess what? I'm if I was an antique dealer, first thing I'd do is fucking oil everything from day one. Keep the shit in shape. This this knife here is my favorite. For some reason or other, I lost the paracord on the other one, but this one here has uh, you know has an unusual shape. It has that tip right there in case I fucking throw it wrong. It it still has a chance of landing with that corner there. So I like that. And, um, and of course it's light as well and it's going to be like zippity quick to whatever I'm throwing it at. And always carry a hacksaw in case somebody steals your fucking awesome dog or something and you find out where they live, which for me wouldn't be hard at all to do. Um, and, uh, you know, don't carry bolt cutters because if a cop stops you with bolt cutters, he's going to think you're a criminal. Uh, even if he thinks you're a criminal already, it's better not to have bolt cutters. Just carry a hacksaw. Everyone carries a hacksaw. 
And hacksaws go through fences really easy. So, And you don't really have to oil a hacksaw, but you can. And uh, always make sure you have your whetstone. Make sure it's wet, though, when you use it. Uh, a lot of people like their whetstones bigger. I guess it matters when you have big knives like this. But, um, yeah. Anyway, so this, this particular knife here is Oscar Linux type coating, which I, I prefer Linux coatings because it's complete and total weatherproofing. This As long as you maintenance this blade here, the entire life of this knife is going to exist forever. It's not going to rust from the inside out. So, whereas this cold steel knife here, you're going to have to oil this continually through its lifetime. Whereas a Linux coating, it's, it's going to keep the knife preserved. So there's nothing wrong with a fucking Linux coating. You know what I mean? And... Um, Don't ever carry a, a, a fold-out knife like this with just the, cl the clip on this is broken, but don't ever just carry the clip showing with the knife in your pocket. That's enough for a cop to decide to search your entire vehicle, which I don't have anything to hide, but you may. And if you're trying to avoid problems, always make sure your knife is on the outside of your fucking pants, just like... A, um, a guy who's doing carpets, you know, his tool is showing on the outside. Just like a roofer, his hatchet is hanging on the outside of his belt. Everything is showing, you're going to have no problems. So that's what all this video is about. Make sure you sharpen and oil your knives. You know, these things come in really handy. They're not overly big and they're portable. But if you don't feel like carrying them, you know, you have other options, whetstones, hatchets with their own sharpener like that. And that's cold steel. Now this, this thing here, man, this would be a kind of hatchet that I would use against somebody that had a fucking, uh, like, like a blade or something. Because I could actually fucking, you know, hit it at the blade at an angle and pull it out of the guy's hand and then like slices you know right down the center of his fucking head that's just if I was in, in that kind of confrontation which is not going to be too likely I'm not that unlike lovable of a person I mean there's people who don't like me but they just need to get over it because a lot of times some of the people that I know from the past you know they uh, they carry baggage and they carry embarrassment They've maxed out credit cards. They've given their girlfriends cards. They've maxed them out. They don't own the equity to their house because they took them back mortgages. They have a lot of depression. And the, the, the first thing they want to do is if they see you, they want to fucking make you look like the fucking worst person on the planet because their life sucks and yours doesn't. You know what I mean. Peace out, guys.